Welcome to the Beginning Band COVID Companion, Distance Learning for Band. This is video one of a four-part series. First, we will learn how to assemble and disassemble our instrument. Next, we will learn how to maintain the mechanics of the instrument and disinfect it. Then, we will learn how to make beautiful sounds on just our mouthpiece. Lastly, we will perform our first notes. I'm going to teach you how to assemble and disassemble your clarinet. First, just listen. Don't try to put yours together quite yet. That will be next. For now, go ahead and pause your screen for just a moment and look at all of these things that I am sharing with you right now. That's a lot of parts, so take a moment and memorize what they are. It'll be useful very soon. The first thing that we do is we set the case on the floor and that way it cannot fall. If you set it on your chair, or definitely if you set it on a music stand, your clarinet is likely to fall on the ground and that could damage it. The first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where the handle is on your case. The side with the case with the handle is the part that goes down on the floor. If you look at the red line, it'll show you what divides your case into two parts. If you put it on the floor so that the handle goes on the bottom, you'll have no problems opening your case. But if you open your case upside down, your clarinet will fall on the floor, and nobody wants that. Next, take out the bell and the lower joint. Check to make sure that the cork on the lower joint is sufficiently greased. This will make it so that when you twist the bell onto the lower joint, it requires less force and will do less damage. Once you've checked to make sure that it is sufficiently greased, you can twist the bell onto the lower joint. When you do this, you want to make sure that your hands are not gripping the silver keys and bars, because if you grip them too hard, they might bend. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to check that the other corks are sufficiently greased too. Twist the upper joint into the lower joint, making sure that the bridge key lines up correctly. Look very closely in the picture and you can see where the bridge key is on the far left picture. The part that says most fragile point is where your bridge key is. Doing this correctly will be easier if you press the silver skittle key between the first and second tone holes. If you look at the arrow on the rightmost picture, it'll show you where that silver skittle key is. So press the silver skittle key down as you twist and make sure not to apply too much pressure because the bars can easily bend. Make sure that your bridge key lines up. If you look at the rightmost picture, you can see the final product of what that bridge key is supposed to look like after you've gotten done putting together your clarinet. The far leftmost picture shows a disassembled upper joint and the middle picture shows them together. Set aside the clarinet body that you have assembled so far. When you do set it down, set it down so that it cannot fall. Meaning, if you lay it flat on the ground and not on its bell, it can't fall. Also, make sure that you set it down where nobody else will step on it. Go ahead and get your mouthpiece out of your case. Take the mouthpiece cap off of the mouthpiece combination, and you can put it right back into your instrument case because it has nothing to do with playing the clarinet. Next, take your ligature off of the mouthpiece for now, 
but keep it nearby because it will soon return to the mouthpiece. You do not need to loosen the ligature much, only loosen it the minimum amount where it will slide off of the end of the mouthpiece. Too many ligatures are broken by unscrewing them all the way. After you ensure that the cork of the mouthpiece is sufficiently greased, get the barrel out of your instrument case. When you twist the mouthpiece onto the barrel, be the most careful with the tip and rails of your mouthpiece because these are the areas that are the most likely to crack and have a big impact on your sound. Remove the reed from your instrument case and then grab it by its thickest part at the bottom and remove it from its reed case. The reed is extremely fragile, especially its tip. And if the reed gets cracked, chipped, folded, or broken in any way, just throw it away. Playing on a damaged reed will be frustrating and cause terrible habits. Sometimes, if the reed is old, it will play out of tune and its tone will be dull, even if it's not damaged in any other way except for the fact that it's old. Replace that reed as soon as possible because we don't want to build bad habits. In order for your reed to vibrate correctly, it needs to be moistened. Some people like to soak their reed in pure water so that the acid in your saliva is less likely to damage the reed. However, some other people like to soak the reed in their mouth because they don't always have a cup of water sitting around. That's okay too. Your reed just might not last as long. Maybe a good policy would be to soak your reed in a cup at home, but soak your reed in your mouth during band rehearsal when you don't have a cup sitting around. The flat side of the reed will go on the flat side of the mouthpiece. Align the curve of the tip of the reed with the curve of the top of the tip of the mouthpiece. Some people prefer to have the reed very slightly past the mouthpiece so that just a slight sliver of the reed shows if you're looking at it from the reverse side. Hold your assembled barrel, reed, and mouthpiece in one hand, securing the reed to the mouthpiece with your thumb. In your other hand, you will grab the ligature. There is a larger side to the ligature and a smaller side. The larger side will pass over the tip of the reed first because the mouthpiece gets gradually larger. Carefully slide the ligature over the reed and mouthpiece like it's giving the reed and mouthpiece a big group hug. The job of the ligature is to hold the reed to the mouthpiece. Be especially aware of the extremely fragile tip of the reed as you do this because the metal of that ligature will tear apart the thin tip of the reed. There are many variations on ligatures, so if yours does not look exactly like mine, that is okay. Some have made out of different materials, and some have the screws in a different place. But almost every single ligature is meant to have the screws on the right when you're done putting the ligature on the reed. The ligature should be finger tight, it only has to be tight enough so that the reed doesn't move when you play. You don't want to over tighten your ligature and strip the inside screw. It's easy for your reed to become off center when you're putting the ligature on. So simply loosen the screws a little, adjust, try again. The top of the ligature should be two millimeters below the apex of the U shape of the reed. If you look at the picture, you can see that I've exaggerated the U shape of the reed and that I have put the apex of it two millimeters away from the top of my ligature. That's how it should look when you're done. Check to make sure that the cork on top of your upper joint is sufficiently greased. Gently twist the barrel onto the upper joint. As you do that, 
Avoid gripping the silver bars and keys as you twist because you don't want to bend those silver bars and keys. When you're done twisting, the center of your reed should be aligned with the center of your thumb hole and register key. The picture on the left shows the reed aligned with the front tone holes, which is incorrect. The picture in the center is the correct alignment of the reed with the back thumb hole and register key. Look at the green arrow. It shows you that the register key is lined up with the reed. Make yours look like that when it's your turn. The picture on the right is also correct. It's just what it's gonna look like from the front of the clarinet instead of from the back. The reed will eventually go on your bottom lip. The lower joint will eventually go into your right hand. That's the joint that's closer to the bell at the bottom. The upper joint will eventually go into your left hand. Now that we've learned how to put the clarinet together, we also must learn how to disassemble the clarinet. Pull the barrel and mouthpiece combination off of the clarinet body and shake the water out of the barrel because that's where most of the moisture will be after you're done playing. I usually just tap the bottom of the barrel on my thigh. Set the body of the clarinet to the side temporarily where it cannot fall and where nobody else will step on it. Gently wipe the flat side of your reed off on either paper towel or what I do is I just wipe it off on my pants. This will speed up the drying process of the reed. Be careful with the tip of your reed as you do that though, because remember it's very fragile. The reed can go back into your plastic reed case to dry. Otherwise, it will warp and play poorly. This is why we never leave the reed attached to the clarinet when we are done playing. Leaving it in your reed case to dry is fine for right now, but eventually you're going to want to put it in your permanent reed case where it will be even safer. The stronger end of the reed is the end of the reed that you should grab with your fingers. When you're done putting your reed back into the reed case, the end of the reed should line up with the opening of the reed case. Look at the third picture that says correct. That's what it should look like when you're done putting your reed away. The picture on the far right shows a reed that has been pushed in way too far. Only push it in the minimum amount so that the reed doesn't fall out. If you push the reed in too far, it will be impossible to retrieve the reed without damaging it. Use your mouthpiece brush to clean out your mouthpiece every time you play. This is very important because you should not run your swab through your mouthpiece ever because that might accidentally crack your mouthpiece and have a terrible effect on your sound. If you haven't purchased a mouthpiece brush yet, a Q-tip will work just fine. Put your mouthpiece back into its cap because you never want to run your clarinet swab through your mouthpiece. You can store your ligature inside the mouthpiece cap too. It'll stay safe and unbent that way. The next step of disassembling the clarinet would be to go get your cleaning swab. The first step of this process is fiercely debated between clarinet teachers. So if your clarinet teacher says to do this differently, that's okay too. But I think that it's best to swab from the bell side first, then through the barrel, because that way you're not dragging moisture throughout the whole clarinet, since the majority of the moisture accumulates at the top. Make sure that when you're pulling the swab through the clarinet, you avoid gripping the bars and keys because if you grip them too hard, they could bend. Disassemble the body in the opposite order in which you assembled it. Always avoid gripping the bars and the keys because you don't want to accidentally bend them. You will put the pieces back in the case the way that you found it. Never force the case closed. If your case is being a little bit stubborn, you probably just need to rearrange the pieces a little bit. Latch both latches and do your best to store your swab outside of your case so that it has a chance to dry. If you don't have a place to store it right now, that's okay. When you get home, 
you should dry out your swab so that it doesn't get moldy. Nobody wants that. Now that you've listened to me assemble and disassemble my instrument, let's try to put it together, together at the same time. Now that we've talked about putting together your clarinet, it's time for us to assemble it at the same time. Since we've already talked about it, I'm going to move through this kind of quickly since you already know what to do. However, if I move in a little too fast for you, don't worry. You can just press pause and rewind if you need to catch up. The first step is to identify where on the case the handle is going to be in relation to the case. Here, it's on the bottom. If I try to take the clarinet out this way, the clarinet's going to fall out and damage the clarinet, and we don't want to do that. So always have the handle on the bottom when you open it. Just like that. First thing we do, bell. When you take these two joints out, it's the larger of the two joints, the longer one, that will be the lower joint. Always check to make sure that this is nice and greased. If it's not greased, then you could bend the bars and the keys of your clarinet when you try to put it together. We don't want that. So we'll take the bell and the lower joint, and we're about to twist them together. But when you do, I'm going to touch as much of the black part of the clarinet as possible to avoid bending the silver parts of the clarinet. So I'm going to find a nice grip on this thing where I'm touching as little silver as possible. And I'm going to gently twist and push all the way on. Next, I'm going to find the upper joint. Now earlier, we talked about the silver skittle. That's this one right here between these two tone holes. I'm gonna put my thumb on that and wrap my hand around, again, the black part of the clarinet, which is less likely to be damaged. I wanna avoid touching the silver parts of the clarinet. Find the bridge key on your lower joint and the bridge key on your upper joint, and we're gonna pay attention to make sure that those go together. They should slide right on top of each other, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the body of my clarinet to the side, somewhere where it cannot fall or get stepped on. Now I'm going to take out the barrel and the entire mouthpiece contraption, as well as my reed. The mouthpiece cap can go right back into the instrument case because it actually has nothing to do with playing the clarinet. Next, I'm gonna take my ligature off for now, but I'm gonna keep it nearby because I'm gonna need it for the reed. We'll take the mouthpiece and the barrel. Again, check. If this is really greased up, then the barrel will go on very easily. This will keep the rails and the tip of the mouthpiece from breaking. Very important. Next, you're going to take the reed. There is a flat part to your clarinet mouthpiece and a flat part to the reed. The round part does not touch the mouthpiece. The flat part goes on the flat part. Now, if you have a cup nearby that you can put pure water in, great. That's a wonderful way to soak your reed. I don't have a cup around me right now, so I'm just going to take this reed. 30 seconds later, it's ready to play. So I take the flat part of the reed and put it on the flat part of the mouthpiece. I want to line it up so that the curve of the reed is with the curve of the mouthpiece. I always put it so I can just barely see a sliver over the top of the mouthpiece, and that's just right for me. When you're putting your ligature on, be very careful because the tip of this reed is very fragile. There's a wider part of the ligature and a narrower part of the ligature. I'm going to put the wider part on first. So as I slide it over, being very careful to protect that tip, I'm going to take a look at where the U-shape on the clarinet reed is. And I'm going to find the top of the ligature two millimeters below the U-shape. Tighten the bottom screw first, 
just finger tight, that'll be just enough. And tighten your top screw next. After that, make sure that it's on nice and straight, and it's secure and ready to go. After that, it is time to put your barrel, mouthpiece, ligature, and reed onto your upper joint. Make sure that your upper joint is greased. When I put my clarinet together, I make sure that the register key in the back where my thumb hole is, lines up with my reed. Eventually, not now, but eventually, this reed is gonna go on my bottom lip. So I know that if I put it on incorrectly and this reed is touching my top teeth, I'm not gonna have a good time. So make sure the reed is lined up with your back thumb hole and you'll be good to go. That's how we put the clarinet together, but it's also very important that we learn how to take it apart just as well. I'm going to start by taking my ligature off and I'm gonna hold my reed there with my thumb. Ligature comes off, set it to the side. I'm gonna use that again in a second. I take my reed off and again, I set my clarinet down somewhere where it cannot fall and nobody else is gonna step on it. This reed, since I've been practicing for a very long time, is going to have all sorts of moisture and slobber on it. We wanna get that off. So if you have paper towel nearby, that's a great way to do it. I personally, I wipe it off on my pants. When you do that, you're really gentle with it because the tip of that reed is extremely fragile. Afterwards, you're gonna take the tip of the reed and the tip goes in first. This is the part where most kids break most reeds, so be very careful. You're gonna grasp it by the thickest part of the reed and put it back into your reed case. Don't put it in too far. I always put it in so that the flat bottom of the reed lines up with the flat bottom of the reed case. Set it to the side now for it to dry. Next, I'm going to remove the mouthpiece from my clarinet. Next, I need to go get my mouthpiece cap. There it is. If you look, there's a cutout spot. That's just for your ligature. I'm gonna take the skinny side of my ligature and put it in first. There we go. Next, I take my mouthpiece and I put it right in there. Be gentle, because that mouthpiece is fragile too. Now that the cap is on the mouthpiece, I can put the whole contraption back into the instrument case. I could put my reed back in there too. Again, you're gonna wanna store your reeds in a more permanent rotation case, but for right now, we can just put it in our instrument case. Next, we're just gonna disassemble the clarinet in the opposite order that we put it together. So next is the barrel. When you're taking off the barrel, Grab as much of the black part of the clarinet as you can so that you don't bend any of the bars or the keys on the instrument. Barrel goes back in the case. Take the upper joint off. Again, if you press the silver skittle key on the upper joint, it will make the bridge key come off more safely. Okay, this is gonna go into the smaller of the two remaining parts. The lower joint in the bell is what remains. Again, you want to grab it by as much black part of the clarinet as possible and avoid the silver parts that can bend. Put the bell back in the case and put your lower joint back in the case. If your case is being stubborn at all, it just means that you need to rearrange the pieces a little bit so that they fit just a little bit better. You never want to force the case closed because it means something needs to be adjusted. Latch both latches. Store it in a dry, safe place. Next, we're gonna learn how to maintain and disinfect our instrument too. 